Welcome. Today we're going to talk about the Burmester 032 integrated amplifier. It's a conventional integrated amp in some ways, unconventional in others. Please join us to find out why. Alright, as I said, in some ways the Burmester 032 is a conventional integrated amp. It's got five inputs, it's got balanced and unbalanced inputs, it's got a headphone jack, it's got a volume control, comes with a remote control, it's got speaker terminals, and everything is in a single box. So in that sense, it's like most other integrated amplifiers on the market. On the other hand, it's somewhat different. It's much larger than most integrated amplifiers. It's 19 inches deep and 19 inches wide. It weighs 62 pounds. It's got metal work that would be the envy of a machinist. So it's different in that sense. It's also unusual because it's a $25,000 integrated amp, which is quite pricey as integrated amplifiers go. But I think Burmester's idea here is, is that this is a top-of-the-line preamp together with a top-of-the-line power amplifier, and therefore that price is, I don't know, somewhat like a $12,000 preamp and a $12,000 power amp. So I think the question we want to ask is, is a sound quality appropriate for something that's trying to be that kind of high-end preamp, high-end amplifier. And we'll come back in a minute and take a look at that question. Just a brief interruption, esteemed viewers. As you may know, I'm Tom Martin, Chief Content Officer of The Absolute Sound. We have a new product. It's on the Substack platform. And we're going to do some interesting things with Substack. First of which is reader questions and answers. Each Monday, Readers will submit questions, we'll pick the most interesting ones, and we'll answer the questions on Friday. We'll also have early access to articles and special blogs that don't appear anywhere else. We hope you'll join us. It's only a cost of a cup of coffee per month. Just check on the screen or in the show notes below. Thanks, and now back to the show. Okay, let's discuss sound quality. Not really that hard to explain, but I thought the 032 sounded exceptional and I want to emphasize one particular area with kind of a second extra credit area and the first thing I want to talk about is that the core quality I kept coming back to with this amplifier was something I want to call grip. It just seems to deliver whatever you throw at it without getting perturbed. And you realize when you listen to this amplifier how many preamp amp combinations have a, a little bit of a zone where they seem to get flustered or they don't seem to be fully comfortable. And I know I'm using like psychological terms to describe electronics, but I think you'll know what I'm talking about. And I think part of what's going on here, at least this is a way to visualize it, even if it isn't exactly what is happening, is that we tend to think of amplifiers in particular, although this is also the case with preamplifier circuitry and really everything from cartridges and D to A converters through to cables, has to deal with transients. And we think about the leading edge of the transient as being the thing we want to worry about. But actually, what this amplifier makes you think is that the trailing edge is also really important and the ability of the amplifier to immediately settle down when a sound stops ringing or resonating or playing is a really important quality. And this amplifier just delivers that in spades. It just seems to, I'm gonna use the word again, have a grip on the music where transients just don't throw it off. They It just reproduces the transient, delivers it to you, and 
boom, you're there. This isn't all only on dynamic music. This is kind of on all sounds that stop and start, which is pretty much all sounds. So I thought grip was just the standout feature of this amplifier, and it seems like just a mega behemoth amplifier. It strangely sounds a little bit like it looks. Okay, enough of the strangeness. The second quality I really liked was I thought that the uh, sonic palette sort of frequency response balance um, harmonic content was really beautiful. Um, it's got a warm but detailed bass and very smooth but detailed highs. And those two qualities don't always go together either in the bass or in the treble. This thing does cymbals like I just haven't heard other amplifiers do. And the balance just lends a really beautiful quality to a lot of music that I thought made it exceptionally enjoyable. And it doesn't have the dryness or the slightly overwrought element that some amplifiers that do a really good job on dynamics can often have. It also doesn't have the sludgy or opaque quality that some amplifiers that sound uh, musical um, but in fact are a little bit colored can sometimes have. So that combination of frequency balance together with grip that seemed to be just unperturbable really worked well. Now I tested this amplifier in a relatively small room and uh, as a result of that I'm sure you could find a speaker, com although I used inefficient speakers by the way, but I'm sure you could find a speaker room combination that would go outside the domain of what the 032 can do. But if you're in a medium-sized room and you have medium or high efficiency speakers, I just don't think you're going to run out of gas on this thing. I think you're just going to love it because whatever you do, it uh, seems to just go shrug and go, cool, love it. Let's play more. And I thought that was super enjoyable. I love this amplifier. I'm sorry it has to go back. All right. Uh, so that's the Burmester 032. Integrated amps usually aren't $25,000, but if you think about it, there are lots of preamps for ten or fifteen or twenty thousand dollars. And if this were a twelve thousand dollar power amp and a twelve thousand dollar preamp, it doesn't seem as strange in my mind, at least. So think about it that way. Uh, I would love to own this power amp, and I think you would too. I hope you've enjoyed this coverage of the Burmester 032 integrated amp. If you have, I would invite you to subscribe, click on the notifications bell. We would also like to have you get our newsletter. It's published weekly and you've got lots of reviews and music coverage and blogs that are contained in there, keep you up to speed on news in the industry. And of course, we would love it if you would subscribe to our flagship publication, our magazine, which has our annual awards, as well as reviews and lots of sidebar conversations with the designers and the movers and shakers in the audio industry. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this, as I said, and we'd love to see you again. Thanks.